got a really important question here for you today. What is a VFL? Who are VFLs? What qualifies as being a Vol for life? That and a whole lot more. It's your Wednesday Locked on Ball. You are Locked on Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, good Wednesday morning, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Balls. This is your team every single day. We're a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And uh, thanks so much for being here, making Locked On Balls your first listen. Shout out every dayers. Um, at the time of this recording, still working through some uh, some sickness. So uh, the, the voice, it seems like I just uh, smoked a pack of Marble Lights, um, Marble Reds, whichever one of your flavor you want, you want to put towards me right now. I, I sound pretty rough, and it's going to get rougher as the 30-minute episode goes on. But... Um, it is part of it and we, uh, we make do with it. So, uh, um, I'll have a couple of days to rest the voice after recording this episode. Hopefully it'll be much better, uh, on tomorrow's episode. So again, apologies there out in, out in front of it. But, uh, anyway, it just kind of is part of it. Um, I do want to discuss what a VFL is. I, I've kind of been teasing in the last couple of days, tease a little bit on social media and, and I've gotten a lot of interaction back and I can't thank you enough. And so, we're going to read back what you guys think VFLs are. I'm going to tell you what I think VFLs are. We're going to hear from a VFL himself, and he's going to tell you what uh, a VFL stands for because I think it's not just a cut-and-dry answer, right? I mean, you've got you got players that came here and played, whether it be football, basketball, baseball, you know, women's basketball, golf, you know, whatever the case is, volleyball. You have people who have come and played the game. You also have people who went to school at Tennessee. You also have people who got degrees at Tennessee. You've also got people who came and played for a little bit and then left. You also have people that came and played a little bit, got a degree and then left. So uh, the question kind of boils down to, and it's very subjective. I mean, what's more important to you for the longest time? I always considered a ball for life. Someone that went to Tennessee who played a sport who gained a degree. And once you gain that degree, if you wanted the grad transfer somewhere else, then that's your own prerogative. Now, the transfer portal's kind of muddy those waters a little bit. And look at guys like Tyler Barron, Tamari McDonald, Danico Slaughter, who just entered the transfer portal. Those guys came here and gave their all for Tennessee for four years. They played four seasons. Now, they did not graduate technically from Tennessee. I went back and checked. None of those three walked the stage in December, which means they probably don't have much school left. Maybe they'll graduate in spring. Maybe they'll graduate in the summer. But uh, unless I'm missing something, unless one of those guys graduated early, they're not going to hold a diploma from Tennessee. So does that change the narrative uh, at all? If you just came in and did the best you could and did all that you could and all, all that, um, and, and then you left, does that qualify enough as being a ball for life? I don't know. Again, what I think can be different from what you think, and that's okay. There's no wrong answers here. I just think that it's a, it's a really, really fun conversation to have because, again, it's very subjective. Now, I've done this topic on radio several years, okay? I've done it several different years. This is not the first time I've done it on this podcast, I believe. Uh, but what kind of reminded me of it again was I heard Josh and Swain over at 99.1 The Sports Animal. Of course, Jason Swain, VFL. <laughs> say it all the time, you know, former player. And then, of course, Josh Ward, who joined us on Ward Wednesday, each and every Wednesday. They were kind of having that discussion. And it kind of reminded me, so I started, like, making some notes and everything. And when I was listening to their show, Vol for Life, Ron Slay, who's, like, Tennessee's mascot at this point. Of course, you know, former SEC, you know, player of the year, you know, had a professional career. Now he's doing big things with 3HL over at 104.5 The Zone in Nashville. I heard him kind of chime in on who he thinks are VFLs. Give this a listen. Some really good stuff here on what Ron Slay deems as a vault for life. Man, I, listen, I, I I appreciate, man, everyone that wants to come and get a taste of Vol Nation and, you know, um, kind of, you know, wear that, wear that T on the side of their helmet or the Tennessee across their chest and, you know, help contribute to the success that the ball athletic program has, you know, um, but, but it is a, but now the buddy is, man, if you, 
if you don't if you don't walk away with uh, lettered years, you know, in in and giving your all like that, I mean, that's the thing. You slap it when you go out the locker room. I gave my all for Tennessee. If you left and you still have some all left, you didn't give your all <laughs> for me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to stand on it. You're not a VFL. Like we, but listen, man, you can come to all the parties and, you know what I'm saying, come back to homecoming and everything and have a good time. But when we separate and start to walk into the VFL room, you don't really get to go in there. Now, now, now you gotta you gotta imagine. Now we're okay with you know sending some. Hey man, take take uh, Joe Johnson um, some some drinks and some cookies out there, man. He waiting outside the door. He couldn't get in here, man. Take him, you know, take him some some refreshments and stuff. He looked a little parts, you know, like when he can't come in and get none of this good VFL water, you know, libation. So you know, help him out. But as far as you being able to throw up the vol sign, that's cool. But to be a VFL. Man, that's a whole different lane right there, brother. That's man, that's a different type of sweat. That's a different type of intensity. That's a different type of type of blood. That's a different different type of tear tears being shed. Like, no, you just can't get that that label, man, and be able to run off into the sunset. But we appreciate everyone that wants to come and contribute to it. But if you didn't get there, stay there. Ride it out through the thick and thin. Nah, I ain't. Nah, I ain't gonna. End up, I'm gonna acknowledge you as a ball. It ain't gonna be no VFL though. That's a volunteer for life. That means I couldn't get out of this thing. I'm in it. That's just my. That's just my take. Okay, so a, uh, a like a three or four year guy who might finish up elsewhere would be a VFGW Vol for a good while. But not all the way through. <laughs> I mean, like if you you got that grad year, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying. You got that grad yeah. year, and we didn't uh, we didn't offer something for you to take. Yeah. Hey, man, feel free to go. Feel free to go knock it out, man. Did you graduate? Did you you have you meet all the requirements here? You walk across that stage, then go get your grad somewhere else. We didn't offer that. Hey, I, that's nothing we can do about that. Yeah, you a VFL, but. No, no, you just, you walked away. You you had a little bit more in your tank to give, my brother. You and my sister, you weren't able to do it. Well, you well, don't necessarily get to get on this same ship as us. So that's what Ron Slade thinks a VFL is. Do you agree? Do you disagree? There's a lot of good stuff there from Ron Slade, but I thought it would kind of add some context to this conversation. If you hear it from someone who has, you know, worked, you know, sweat, bled, everything Tennessee, and what he thinks. I thought it was kind of funny. It was like, if you had something left in the tank and you didn't give it, then truly you're not a VFL. But if you emptied the tank, then you can be a VFL. Now, you appreciate everybody, and I agree with that. You appreciate anybody that chose to be a Tennessee volunteer. But I do think there's a difference in someone who chose to be a Tennessee volunteer and then chose again to stay when things got bad. And, and you know, that brings me to... Another question we can hit on in segment number two, like what's Ty Chandler? I think he's a very interesting uh, interesting kind of variable in this, a guy like Ty Chandler. And so we'll discuss that here in just a moment. But that was Vol for Life, Ron Slay on what he believes a VFL truly stands for. So what about some of those conversations about guys like Ty Chandler? Um, some of your thoughts and expressions on what a VFL truly means. That's coming up next right here on Lockdown Vols. Do you want to say about our friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook? As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot with FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That is $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on all that action. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, those totals, overs, unders, and a whole lot more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season today. FanDuel, it's the official partner of the NFL. All right, guys, welcome back into your Wednesday edition of Locked On Vols. It is your team every single day. Appreciate you for being here. We're talking about Vol for Lives. Who can be VFLs and what's that mean to you? And so I kind of posed this question out there and I put it on social media on Friday of last week. And a lot of you guys have chimed in. I can't thank you enough. But like in somebody I brought up last weekend, you know, Ty Chandler is interesting. Grew up in Nashville. Okay. Went to NBA, played here at Tennessee for four years, has a degree from Tennessee, 
And then when everything was going crazy, whenever, you know, Pruitt got fired and all that type of stuff, there was no head coach at the time. He elects to leave and goes to North Carolina, plays a season. Now he's still in the NFL. Would Ty Chandler be a VFL? In my eyes, he always, you know, he always was. But according to Ron Slay, technically, you still didn't empty the tank. So maybe he's he would have that discussion is what he said when asked specifically about Ty Chandler. So again, there's no right or wrong answers here. There's no, it's not all or nothing. It's what you interpret it. So I think that's why this is such a an interesting conversation. Um, you know, as far as the fan aspect goes, you can be whatever you want, um, is how I've always viewed it. For me, I didn't go to Tennessee. I don't have a degree from Tennessee. I didn't play at Tennessee. I am not a VFL. That's how I've always viewed myself. But for those of you Tennessee fans out there that are huge Tennessee fans that live and die off every three-point shot attempt by Rick Barnes' basketball team, by every field goal attempt from Josh Heupel's football team, you know, I mean, I think that qualifies you as a VFL. Again, it's, it's truly subjective. So what do some of you guys have to say about this? Uh, let's read some of the responses here. I'll go over to uh, Twitter. Let's see here. Bryson Hall says, if they went somewhere for three to four years, came here for one to two, and they claim Big Orange, they're a VFL. So that's interesting. That's like Gabe Judy Lolly. Gabe Judy Lolly went to Vanderbilt for three years. He went to BYU for one year. And then he came and finished at Tennessee for his final year. To me, you finished at Tennessee. You chose to come here to Tennessee. You'll be invited back to the reunions and all that. Sure, I think that's a VFL, and that's that's kind of what Bryson believes as well. Uh, Sean, uh, Shane Cox says this, Vol fan no matter what, no matter the sport, Vol player no matter the sport. How to lose status, openly bring negative attention to the program, and hurt it socially. Leave the program, go to another school within the same conference. Well, with the transfer portal, you're seeing that happening a lot right now. You're seeing guys come out here and play for a couple years, use that extra year of COVID eligibility, enter the transfer portal, and go to the Ole Misses, go to the Arkansas, you know, go to some of these other teams from around the SEC. So if they were to do that, do they lose VFL status? I don't know. That's what Shane believes. Chase says, in my opinion... You finish your collegiate career at Tennessee. You are a VFL. You realize you shouldn't be here all along, came here, and that your final collegiate memory is playing in Tennessee Orange. So finishing your Tennessee career in Orange makes you a VFL. So pretty much all those players that started here and entered the transfer portal are not VFLs, depending on how long they played here, because you didn't finish here. It's all about finishing here. That's what Chase has to say. Let's go to... Shreveport Vol, um, I told you my voice would get worse as we went on here. I apologize. I know it's hard to listen to, guys. I'm not. Uh, it's 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 hard to get through this, and I'm not a huge fan of how I sound right now either. It just kind of is what it is. Let's go to Shreveport Vol. Um, one thing to add: a VFL can have a rough patch with the university. Many have not called Arian Foster a VFL for his few incidences in the past, but he has since made amends and embraced Tennessee. I think that makes him a VFL. Family is not always sunshine and rainbows. That is a really good point. Raise your hand if you have a perfect, picture-perfect family. Raise your hand if when you get together at the Christmas holidays, somebody doesn't get on your nerves, or you roll your eyes at your spouse and say, let's get out of here, or whatever the case is. We all have families, right? I mean, they're all beautiful and unique. Um, but it's not always sunshine and rainbows. And so I think that's a really, really good point. Arian Foster is a great, a great example. His tenure here at Tennessee did not end the right way, did not end well, both on the field and off the field. But he has come back so many different times. He has done so many different interviews embracing, endorsing Tennessee football for what it is now. Yes, you know, 10 years later, 10, 15 years later, it has extra meaning for him. So I think that's a really, really good point. Would you consider Arian Foster a ball for life? Many would. Many would. Um, Give him six, says T Mac to Mary McDonald equals VFL. Tyler Barron is not a VFL. Jared Garantano is a VFL. Tyon Evans is not a VFL. Brandon Turnage is a VFL. He says, I can elaborate on my reasons for these labels and why I think they the way I do. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're listening right now, I'd love for you to elaborate on that. Like Tamir McDonald literally has the same path as Tyler Barron. They came in in the same class. Both played here for four years. To my understanding, neither one has a degree from Tennessee because they're probably a couple of classes short. They leave in the transfer portal at the same time. So why is Tamir McDonald considered evolved for life when Tyler Barron is not? To each their own. I mean, I would imagine that both of those guys were seeking name, image, and likeness opportunities. You know, right? Um, I don't know how much for either one, but I would assume that both of those guys were seeking those opportunities and both went and found it elsewhere, both at Ole Miss. So I'd be intrigued to say why I'd be intrigued to wonder why T Mac is considered a VFL, but but Barron is not. Now, Tyler Barron has flirted with the transfer portal every year he's been here. In fact, Tyler Barron entered the transfer portal for a brief stint, kind of like like a couple of years ago, and then came back to Tennessee. So I'd be interesting there. JG is another good example. Dude came here, dude got broke, both on the field and by this fan base, and by his coaching staffs, and by his seventeen offensive coordinators and quarterback coaches. There was never stability for Jared Garantano, but he continually went out there, continually went out there. And despite the play on the field not being up to par a lot of the time, he gave his all for Tennessee. And finally, when there was an opportunity, when Tennessee, you know, when he graduated, when he was allowed to transfer, he did and tried to go finish out elsewhere, tried to get a new opportunity, a new perspective. I think a lot of people would say that was a clean break. Tennessee needed that break. Jerry Garantano absolutely needed that break. So for a guy that still reps Tennessee everywhere he goes, to this day, why why deprive him the value of being evolved for life? You know, I I think that's again, I think that's interesting. Tyon Evans, he was literally here for one year, so absolutely, he didn't start here, he didn't finish here. Uh, well, technically, he started here. It was JUCO. He came up from JUCO, so I would say he's not a VFL. I agree with that. Brandon Turner is interesting because he came here from Alabama, spent three seasons here, and is going to go play another season somewhere else. So that was interesting. Um, good, good stuff there from, uh, give him six. I really appreciate that. Grabbing a swig of water here to see if it can help my pipes a little bit. Uh, let's go to big orange underscore life. Let's see a VFL is either a, a former three to four year player who finishes his career at Tennessee, most typically coming back from games, coming back for games or B anybody who has their whole week ruined with a loss or their whole year made with a win. Tennessee sports is at least 35% of his personality. Fans equal VFLs. I'm glad I read this one. I'm going to go back to what he says in terms of being a fan. Anybody who has their whole week ruined with a loss, or their whole year made with a win. The loss to Florida ruined your week this past year. The loss to Missouri ruined your week last year if you're a Tennessee fan. But the win against Alabama made your year in 2022, right? Absolutely made your year. I think that's a really, really good point and a great way to phrase this when talking about fans being VFLs. So I've never really considered fans VFLs. That's just my opinion. But fans can absolutely be VFLs. Fans who give their passion, their time, their emotional support to a team can be VFLs. Fans who are now monetarily giving even more to Tennessee, whether it be the Tennessee Fund or to Spire Sports and the, and the Volunteer Club, the collective. Who am I to say you're not a VFL if you're doing that? You know what I'm saying? Some good stuff there. Follow up. Um, players who transfer in and finish their careers at Tennessee are VFLs. So as long as they bleed orange and not the color from their starting school. I think that's a, a good way to phrase it as well. We'll do one more before we take a quick reset and we'll get into more of your, uh, your comments on who are VFLs? Let's see here. SLC underscore Vol says undergrad degrees only. Post degrees are sus. That's interesting. So Keenan Peely wouldn't be a VFL. Gabe Judy Lolly wouldn't be a VFL. Um, a lot of these players who came to Tennessee after getting it technically, I think Joe Milton would be a v, would not be a VFL under this because. He spent a lot of time in Michigan. I'm pretty sure he has a degree from Michigan. So hey, it has to be an undergrad degree only. So kind of eliminating this extra year of COVID eligibility where people 
could finish their time at Tennessee for a season or two. That's interesting there. Uh, more on who you think are VFLs and what qualifies as a VFL. That's coming up next right here as we continue on on Lockdown Vols. All right, we got a final segment left here of this Wednesday edition of Locked On Vols. Again, guys, welcome back into it. You everydayers can't thank you enough. I'm Eric Kane, your host, and I am uh, severely battling at the time of this recording. Pre-recorded this episode um, before the Christmas. Uh, cr- uh, really, this is honestly, this is Christmas Eve, the day I'm recording this. And unfortunately, I'm kind of battling through some sickness right now. So hopefully by the next time you hear my boys on Thursday's podcast, I will sound much, much better. Um, but I do appreciate that uh, for you working and, and being patient with me. I know that it is uh, just abysmal to listen to me right now, Uh, but I can't thank you enough for doing it anyway. Uh, The VFL show chimes in when we're talking about Vol for Lives and and, and what qualifies as the VFL. My VFL qualifications. Play your last snap of college football in the orange and white. Example, McAllen Castles is a VFL. But under that same example, example, you know, the last one I highlighted in segment two, McAllen Castles wouldn't be a VFL. Again, very subjective. Tyler Barron, not a VFL. Also, fans can be VFLs. Warning, if this is an all caps right here. If you change teams as a fan, you are not a VFL. You don't get to hop around and call yourself a VFL. I mean, that's a given, right? Who in their right mind who is listening to a podcast like this on Tennessee or listening to a Locked On Gators or Locked On Kentucky or Locked On you know, Ole Miss or whatever? Like, If you were listening to a podcast like this, then the chances are you're not going to have two teams, right? If you have two teams, you're not a fan of either one. I mean, that's just that that is that is weak sauce. If you root on, <laughs> if you root on Tennessee in football and Kentucky in basketball, what are we doing here? You, you know what I'm saying? Like those aren't, in my opinion, in my opinion, those aren't true fans. Now there can be exceptions, as Ron Slay would say earlier. Like when we listen to him, there can be some waivers. But uh, for the most part, those are not true fans. Uh, Good good stuff there from the VFL show. Let's see here. This is from Keenan. I think it's reasonable to consider people VFLs as long as they finish their career at Tennessee. A lot of people are saying finishing their career at Tennessee. I would consider Cordero Patterson a VFL, even though he was only here for a semester. It's hard to view people as VFLs if they finish uh, their career elsewhere, especially if it's a rival. Again, Danico Slaughter, Arkansas, Tyler Barron, Ole Miss. It's a good point. Um, my guy Robert Boswell, who's been on the show before, he's a VFL. I know that for a fact. He played at Tennessee. He chimes in and says, Tennessee native, check. UT alumni, check. Played football at UT, check. Season ticket holder, check. Is that enough? Asking for a friend. Yeah, brother. This, yeah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> you're good, Robert. Uh, go check out his podcast. He hosts uh, the... Uh, I don't want to screw it up, so I'm going to make sure he oh, he hosts the, uh, well, he used to host a podcast. It's not really in his uh, bio anymore. Anyway, it was, uh, it was a walk-on podcast. Awesome, awesome stuff. He might still host it. He'll chime in. He'll let me know if he still hosts it, but I'm just kind of hovering over his Twitter, his X profile, and I don't see anything about his podcast anymore in his bio. But for the longest time, um, you know, he hosts a podcast on, on walk-on success stories. Great stuff. And I, I would imagine it's still out there, so go ahead and give that a listen. I'll come back with and, and confirm that here in a little bit. Um, good spot to take a little sip of water, right? Let's see here. This is from JB. If you play at Tennessee and you stay out of trouble, be a good teammate, represent our school, team, and fan base with honor, all while giving your all, you're a VFL. So if you come here and play, give your all, stay out of trouble, you're a VFL. Okay. Um... Kurt says, it's hard to put a tangible answer to it, but I know a VFL when I see them. When it's obvious they put UT above anything else, did their best for the university, someone that's a great ambassador when they're introduced as from the University of Tennessee, it's a proud feeling. Okay, I like that as well. Let's see here. Tim says, in my opinion, a VFL is anyone who plays a sport and finishes their eligibility, turns pro, at Tennessee, if a student athlete participates in at least one season here, he or she is considered a VFL, barring he or she does not transfer out. Fans are not VFLs, as Tim goes on. Fans are not VFLs. It is a symbolic mark reserved only for players because they have earned that right and that privilege. 
I get that. I, you know, I don't. I don't disagree with that. I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think that's a that's a good way to uh, to look at that. Um, fans maybe f- might feel differently because they're out there performing, and they're nothing without the the support and the camaraderie and the passion of the fans. So maybe a player would feel differently about that. But I certainly understand where you're coming from there because it's like as a fan, I'm not out there sweating. I'm not out there working. I'm not out there scoring touchdowns. The players are. So if you want to think that the VFL card is only reserved for their right because they earned it, I agree with that. I couldn't. I, I think that's a really, really solid point. Let's go on here with um, Tyler. VFL is anyone that gives their all for Tennessee that doesn't transfer to a rival. Spending a COVID year somewhere else is fine. Example, Ty Chandler. Also, as a fan, if you bleed orange and no other color, you're a VFL, plain and simple. Maybe it's as simple as, you know, removing the COVID year of eligibility uh, because that's that's just a little bit different. Uh, we'll go to uh, the YouTube, a couple of YouTube comments here. Loyalty and giving your all for Tennessee. You don't have to be here. You don't have to be here from the beginning. You can transfer to Tennessee and 100% be a VFL. What kills it for me, Barron is a perfect example. If you leave for more money, not the NFL, you are not a VFL. If you're fishing for money, you don't care about the school. You just want a bigger paycheck. My rebuttal will be, how do we know for sure that that's what it is? Okay. It's easy to assume that. In a lot of cases, I'm right there with you. I'm not using him as a pure example, but it's easy to assume that. We have a pretty good idea when someone's just hunting down money. But how do we know that for sure? Maybe you don't have to know that for sure. Uh, but I do think that's a, that's a really, really good point. Another comment here is Vol for Life is simple. It ain't Vol for Life except that last year of eligibility I had and left and gave my all for another school. Once you become a Vol, you stay locked in. Good point. Loyalty and integrity. No departure to the transfer portal on your own doing. Another comment. I think you have um, you have to put the balls first and give your all for Tennessee through the good year and the bad fans can be a VFLs. If you don't need a degree, as long as you let everyone know you rock with the balls, win or lose, you're a VFL. Let's see here. Only a VFL if you leave a ball early to go to the NFL. Chandler now Barron that screws Tennessee players drafted to go to the NFL. They lost their VFL card. Okay. A player that gives it all for Tennessee when they play. It's about effort and appreciation to be playing on that team. Another, another poster says, don't need a degree, just need to show loyalty. I think that's fair. This one's interesting here, okay? I personally don't think a fan is a VFL. That was something that was created for the players. That's just how I feel about it. Us fans are more like VFFLs. Vol fan for life. It's tricky with players being a VFL. It's really all about the circumstances of why they left the program. Also, if you think about it this way, a player comes to UT and plays for three years, then moves to another school for a year. It's no different than a player coming to Tennessee uh, for three years, then going pro. Fans only care about the productive players that leave. They also uh, they aren't as concerned about the players that didn't get as much playing time and wants to go somewhere else that will allow them to play more. It's a really good point. Um, I'm not going to fault anybody for wanting to leave and have a better opportunity for themselves, whether that's you know academically, whether that's monetarily to go and, and get a check, whether that's just to go play for the love of the game because you're not getting much run here. I think there's many reasons people can leave. But according to this poster, it's kind of the same as you know, we only remember the ones that were good that left, not the ones that, you know, came in maybe in the same situation from another school or maybe, you know, the ones that didn't play here that wanted to go seek another opportunity for them. So I don't know, a lot of great stuff here. I've spent a lot of time reading uh, comments and, and posts and I have a whole lot of good stuff here. I just think it's very subjective. But one thing's for sure, if you're going to be a VFL, I think it's paramount that you give you're all for Tennessee and that you bleed orange, your attitudes affected by it, um, your blood, sweat, tears, all that type of stuff is to be about Tennessee. So um, I just think it's a really interesting conversation. Again, I wanted to share a lot of this was about sharing what you guys had to say. Um, Might have been a little bit more of a boring episode, obviously one more that was more difficult to listen to because of my voice. Uh, but I wanted to kind of bring on a lot of what you guys had to say on what your thoughts 
about a VFL truly were. So that was the kind of the point of this episode here today. And um, appreciate you guys always the interaction. It is incredible here on Lockdown Balls. Let's see if my voice is better on Thursday's episode. I bet it will because, again, pre-recording this episode, I'll have a couple of days to rest the voice. So uh, here's to hoping that that's the case. Again, I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. And uh, thank you so much for listening to Lockdown Balls. We'll be back tomorrow. This is Lockdown Balls.